let's jump right in. We've sketched in our main theme, now we need to develop a B section. The finished piece will have an A-A-B-A -A -A structure. Notice in the piano roll view the variety of velocity values. Now here's another way of duplicating a repeated passage. Right-clicking brings up a menu. One of the choices is Groove Clip Looping. Now we can drag it out and repeat it as many times as we want. The rounded corners on the clip indicate that it's a groove clip. Let's place another marker in the timeline using F11 to bring up the dialog. Now let's discover a resolution to this B section. The first clip plays as we wait for our cue. We can do as many recording passes on the same MIDI track as we want. The B section is sketched in. Now, let's add some percussion to this project. I've loaded up Earth Drums 1 in ARIA and added a MIDI track in Sonar, which is on MIDI channel 3. I want to find a drum pattern that can play all through section A. That'll work. Now, this is the perfect kind of clip to loop. Like we did before, and dragging it out all the way to the B section 3. Now I want to add a melodic counter rhythm. I've inserted harp plux, it's on MIDI channel 4. First off, I've simply played the chords. Now here's a neat trick in Sonar, which is also available in a lot of recording programs. The arpeggiator. It will make those chords play as arpeggios. We enter the shape called as played. Here are some more options. Sixteenth notes are what we want with a two octave range. And now all these basic tracks playing at once. Let's record what that arpeggiator is playing. That way we can free up our harp pluck instrument to be plucked again and not always arpeggiated. Edit, bounce to clips, and it's instantly done. And the arpeggiator is now turned off. Now let's take a look at this in the piano roll view. Let's get some more variety in our velocity values here. It's easy enough with the draw tool to sweep through and change those values. This instrument responds dynamically to the velocity changes. This is the kind of work that eventually will be done with all the tracks. We can edit the velocities to a whole group of notes at once. Select in the piano roll timeline, hover the draw tool until the velocity column appears and drag up or down. Since our basic tracks are sketched in now, we're going to turn off the playback metronome. Returning to the drums, I've recorded some more notes for this B section. And for the final measure, I've done a copy and paste from that loop that we made earlier. Now we're going to return to the first A section, but I'm going to change the key and give the project a lift. And there's the start of that, in B minor instead of A minor, up a full step. By the way, the way the workspace is divided into these quadrants is controlled by this, Enable Tabbing for Open Views. In Sonar X1 there are screen sets for displaying different workspaces. Let's take a look at the staff view. We've changed keys here at 4, which is the repeat of the A section. So right there we need to insert a key change. We can also see that this is 4-4 four, four time, that is correct, and it's been in the key of C, which is correct for A minor, but now we need the key of D, which is also the key for B minor. Returning to the first measure, we can see things are set correctly. There's 4-4 four, four time in the key of C. Now, reaching up to our markers menu, we can jump all the way to 4. And with the pencil tool, we could be inserting notes right here in the staff view. We can change the note value by selecting 8 notes here in the menu. But one of the limitations of working this way in the staff view 
is that the note lengths can't be worked with nearly as flexibly as they can in the piano roll view. With the snap to grid off, the notes can be of any length we want. Returning to aria, let's insert another instrument, not an ensemble, which is a group of instruments, but a single instrument. We click the first available empty slot. Listening to what we have so far, I've decided we need some low brass. Back in the track view, I've inserted a MIDI track and assigned it to ARIA, channel 5. The track is armed for recording by pushing R. And now, I want this to bridge into part 4. Now, let's select all of the clips, sweep through the timeline, then click the first track, hold down SHIFT and select the last track. Now, holding CONTROL, we shift everything over and make a copy, which lands right at our marker 4. Now remember, we want this repeat of A to be a full step higher, but we don't want to shift the earth drums or those two chords that are at the beginning of 4. So with the other clips still selected, I push Control q which brings up the transpose dialog. I click for 2 to shift those clips up 2 notes. Here's an important side note. You've noticed that we zoom in and out a lot. The controls for both horizontal and vertical are in the lower right-hand corner of every workspace. Back to the project. Earlier, we selected and copied everything for simplicity. But we have too much. We're going to have the A section repeat just once. Everything after measure 33 needs to be erased. It's easily done. Lasso those clips. Push delete on the computer keyboard. and pick up the strays as we go. Now these clips begin before measure 33, so we just collapse them. Let's listen to what we have. We need some kind of ending. Okay, we need to mark that. Let's zoom in. Mark that the end. And start thinking of things we could do for the final moments of the piece. I don't want those two notes. I could erase them or just collapse the track but I want the harp to do something there at the end, so I've inserted one of the harp glissando patches. And by playing one note, I have that beautiful ending. Let's do something with tempo right here at the end of the piece. At the far right is the column where all tempo changes are listed. We're going to turn this snap off, get our pencil tool, and simply draw. There we go. Yeah! Next, production, using MIDI controllers and getting the whole project ready for the final mix down.